Hello and welcome everyone to Reading with a Ranger. I'm Ranger Bianca here at Benson State Park and today we're going to be reading The Mushroom Fan Club. It's one of my favorite books and it's got really awesome little characters drawn by Elise Gravel and written by Elise Gravel. It's published by Drawn and Quarterly and we have their permissions to read this book today. So let's get started. If you have any questions, please feel free to email me or send those questions in. Okay. So today we have reading with a ranger. And here in the background, I've got one of my favorite funguses. This is a uh, turkey tail that I saw over at Cooper Lake State Park, where I used to work. You can see all the beautiful art that Elise has illustrated here. The trees, you know, the, her family, the mushrooms, the cats, and we'll see that throughout the book. You know what I love? Walking in the woods and looking for mushrooms with my kids. It's like a treasure hunt that nature organized just for us. And if you look and see through these pages, you can actually see a lot of different kinds of mushrooms through here. Uh, let's see what, how many different species we can count. We see one here, another one right here, so that's two, here's three. It looks a lot like number one, but the cap is a little bit different. Four is bright, bright, bright red orange. Five over here on this stump, that's a weird looking one. It's a bract, so it's only growing a little bit out of that trunk. And up on top, you've got another one. And that's a, a little white one. We've got more bracts over here. And she's even holding one in her hand. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I hope you have your eyes warmed up. Let's go on that treasure hunt. I am obsessed with bizarre creatures and mushrooms are certainly strange. They look like aliens from outer space. Look at all the different kinds. The little baby ones, the big brainy ones, blues, greens, reds. Ooh. Mushrooms are not plants or animals. They are a kingdom of their own, the realm of fungi. Many mushrooms look like the one I've drawn here, but not all of them. They come in many shapes, sizes, and colors. Their smells differ widely too. Some stink horribly. Others have a delicious perfume. There are some next to my cottage that smell like maple syrup. Hmm, that must be nice to wake up to. Parts of the mushroom. So we have different parts of the mushroom. And if you have your document with you, uh, I sent out a PDF earlier. And this can correspond to that PDF. But we're gonna go ahead and fill it out uh, here. We're gonna compare and contrast here a little bit. We have same page, right? So it says, this is the cat. And the corresponding word on our paper is also the cat. So that's going to go up here, right? This right here is our cat. Right? So that's the first part. And what's the next part? We've got a whole lot of stuff in there. Let's see. 
spores, that one's not listed on our paper, but where do the spores fall out from? You can see all these little lines here on the mushroom. Uh, what are those called? So if you think about it, they look kind of similar to something fish have. Fish have gills. So in this case, all of these little lines right here, for example, are the gills. Perfect. Okay, we still have something pointing up here at the top. It's supposed to be pointing right at that little piece that's in there. So we'll just color that in a little bit as we go along. So what is that little piece? That little piece isn't in our book here. That is our scales. Another case there. Now scales come from what's called a veil. The veil holds all of this together in a little egg shape here at the bottom. And this little egg shape uh, is called a bulba in our book, but it's called a little something different in our uh, worksheet. It's called the Cup. It does have a little cup like shape, or you can draw a little handle on it. <laughs> okay, and let's see what else. Let's finish this up. Okay, we've got our mycelium. That's very different from the words we have on our page. But if you look at what it's pointing at, it's pointing at all these little roots down here. It's this one right here, right? It's pointing at these roots. <laughs> And that's one of the words on our page. What else do we have? We have this thing right here. Our brain. In some places, in our book, as we read along, it's going to refer to that as a skirt. It's a pretty little skirt. And last but not least, we have this part, right? Our what we would call our stem, or what the book calls our stalk. I'll spread it. Let's see it. Right there. So those are the parts of our mushroom on our worksheet. That wasn't too bad. Now, when we look at a mushroom and we compare it to a plant, plant has a lot of those same uh, parts, but the plant um, has a lot of different parts that also will separate it from this mushroom. So let's start from the bottom of the plant. This part is about the same, right? They look pretty similar. This is also called the roots. Now, now that we've made that, let's go up. And this is talking about this whole thing that holds this plant upright. And that would be kind of like this, right? So what is it called? It is also called a stem. Now this is different. This little piece right here, this is what it's pointing at. What part of the plant is that? That's the plant, part of the plant that photosynth uses photosynthesis, right? That's where the plants make their energy from sunlight that comes in. Now, fungus doesn't use photosynthesis. It gets its nutrients from plants and from uh, debris. So let's see. This part is called a leaf. And it has what's called chlorophyll that make it green. I don't use the word, but it should be green. Now this one up here, we're almost done. What would we call this? It's right here. I'm gonna put it in blue 
Doesn't it kind of look like a fruit, like a blueberry? So this would be either the fruit or the seed. And I remember on our picture in our book, there was a whole bunch of little dots going down. And those were our spores. Spores are the fungus version or mushroom version of seeds. And the fruit of this plant is kind of the whole piece of this right here. It's called a fruiting body. Except the roots. The roots are what make up the rest of the fungi. And they grow much deeper than that. Let's see. One last part of the top. This thing right here is going to open up. It's going to look like a nice, pretty flower. So let's say this is our flower. Another thing that I don't have. Right? So they're kind of the same here, but once you get up here, they change quite a bit. Perfect. And now we're back. Okay. Let me go ahead and share again. Perfect. Okay, so there we have it. Let's continue on our little journey here. When you try to identify a mushroom, you have to look under its cap, right? So if we look under the cap of these guys, this one's got all the little lines. Remember, those are called gills. So this is a mushroom with gills. But we look over at these guys, and those don't look like a bunch of little lines, right? Going from the cap. Those look funny. This one's got spines on it or teeth. So this is a mushroom with spines. And we look down under here, and even this one is different from this guy. So we look at him, and it's got these tiny little dots or pores, right? Like the pores on our face. This is a mushroom with pores. These are very important for identifying them. Let's see what it says. Some have gills that are like paper thin blades. There are thousands of different mushrooms like this, including the kinds found at the grocery store. Others have little needles and some have tiny holes like a sponge. It's through these various types of underbellies that they produce and release spores, which are a bit like seeds, right? We talked about it. This is how mushrooms reproduce. Some mushrooms grow in the grass, others in dead leaves or on rotten wood or even living trees. Some are so tiny we can't even see them and others are as big as a baseball field. That's pretty big. I don't know them all. There are too many. There are millions of fungus species around the world. And here on this page, we have some illustrations of a bunch of different species. You could potentially run across something that looks similar to these um, out there on your hike. So let's see, we've got some that don't even have a stock on them. Uh, like this guy here, he just looks like a blob. This one just looks like a ball. And then this one, the cap looks like it's going in. I don't even know what's going on with this guy or that one. <laughs> but some of them look like our classic mushrooms. Let's see what different kinds we can see. Some people know a lot more about mushrooms than I do. They're called mycologists. I am no expert. I am an amateur. I just love looking at mushrooms. The proof that I'm no expert, I draw them with eyes. Yeah, we don't have mouths either and we can't speak. But I'm not the only one who likes finding mushrooms. Many animals and bugs like them too. When you walk in the woods, you might encounter some of these wild mycologists. 
So let's see here, who's eating from these mushrooms? We see several different animals, including the deer, the squirrel, and the bear. And those are mammals. But we also see uh, bugs, right? We see flies there at the bottom, those green flies. And we see all of these guys over here. This looks like it might be a millipede. Look at all how many legs it's got. This one's got, uh, this might be an insect. And then over here, we have a dancy little snail. Oh, just again, trying to get this to work. So that's a slug eating a mushroom right there. You can see the stalk of the mushroom. He already got rid of the whole cap. And this right here is a big slug. It kind of looks like scat, but it's not. That might be a tactic for it to hide from predators. And it's a very healthy slug. Would you like to come for a walk with us? I'll introduce you to some of my mushroom buddies. But first, I'd like you to follow these two rules. Number one, protect their environment. Mushrooms are often friends with the plants in the forest, helping them and many animals survive. So be gentle and don't litter, and try not to pick too many mushrooms. Leave some for the slugs and squirrels. And if you're in a state park, you better be practicing leave no trace. <laughs> and you know, you can always draw a picture of the mushrooms you find or even take a photo, right? Easy as that. Number two, don't eat them. Many mushrooms are poisonous. Only grown-up mycologists know for certain which ones are safe to eat. We can make you very, very sick and even worse. Bolites. If you find a mushroom with sponge-like holes under its cap, it might be a bolete. There are many species of bolites and some are delicious. You can find dried bolites in grocery stores. Some bolites turn blue when we touch them. It's very pretty. Others have a slimy, slimy cap like a slug, like the slug we just saw. And some have spots that look like dragon scales. Bugs like bolites a lot. So these mushrooms are often home to hundreds of tiny worms. We've got our wiggly bolites. And here we have where I experienced that myself. Tons of little worms. Just set it down, just set it down. <laughs> You can see all the little oh, right there. Ah! Just wipe it. Just wipe it. You're good. Move it back on. I was like, man, all the mushrooms falling apart in my hand, and then it was like moving. <laughs> I'm like, wait, this is a mushroom. Hold on a minute. <laughs> the chanterelle. Here's a really good species. The chanterelle is one of the first mushrooms I learned to identify. They're very pretty, bright orange and often grow with a bunch of friends, right? They grow in bunches. They're easy to recognize because their caps look like a trumpet, right? You see the cap and it's kind of sunken in and it's got the shape right there of a trumpet. Instead of gills, they have little folds like an old person's wrinkles. That's what all these little faded lines are. They're not too deep. Some mushrooms look like chanterelles, but are very toxic. They're called jack-o'-lantern mushrooms. It's a pretty name, don't you think? The main difference between them is jack-o'-lantern mushrooms have real gills instead of wrinkles. You can see that these are wrinkles because they're not individual strands. So the individual strands that don't connect, these connect here and here, 
uh, that would be a jack-o'-lantern picture. And I actually have a few examples with me of some dried mushrooms. Uh, chanterelles are good for eating, and that's why I have some. These are great in different recipes. You just add a little bit of water to them before you use them, and you're good to go. The morel. Ah, uh, morels. They are so cute. They look like an alien's brain. You can see it right there on the side in that picture. I love morels, and when I find some, I jump all over the place and squeal. It's silly, but I can't help myself. It's because I don't find them often. Morels like to grow where there have been forest fires. They love ashes. They're hard to see because they look like dead leaves they grow on, or like pine cones. They are hide and seek champions. And again, from Central Market, I've got some morels too. All nice and dried, and they last a very long time. So if you wanted to go ahead and pick some up just to show yourself or your students or whoever you're showing, this would be an awesome way to go ahead and do that. You can just add a little bit of water and that will help them take their usual shape. And if you really want to be fancy, you can come into a recipe. That's my kind of learning. My daughter's favorite mushrooms are polypores. These hard mushrooms often grow on tree trunks or roots and can get pretty big. My oldest daughter collects them. We once found one as big as a plate. These mushrooms are cool because you can find them even in the winter. You can see that they found one on this big tree trunk right here, but there's also some other species over here and another species over here. So let's see what this leads us to. Ooh, you see how big that one is? This was on one of our mushroom hikes. And this right here, that white piece, is a new one growing out of this tree trunk. And they start off like that. It's just this white mass, all bubbly. And they become this. So this one's not as big as a dinner plate, but you can see from my friend's hand right there, it's still pretty big. The false morel. Here's another guy that looks like a brain. Yeah, it kind of looks like a morel, right? But it's not quite a morel. Its Latin name is gyromitra. Since it looks a bit like a morel, it's sometimes called a false morel. When you touch it, it feels like cold rubber. There are lots of little caves inside its cap. If I were a bug, I'd like my house to be inside a gyromitra. Ooh, look at that one. The lactarius indigo. Some mushrooms produce a liquid that looks like milk. When you cut them, we call these lactarious mushrooms. Lactarious indigo is special because milk it produces is bright blue. I've never found any, but I keep looking. I think they're quite rare. If you see one, you're lucky. I'll be jealous and insist you take me mushroom hunting with you next time. It'd be fun. Ooh, the puff ball. The puffball is an interesting specimen. When it's young, it's all white and smooth, like an egg or a golf ball. Then as it grows up, it turns yellow or brown or gray. And then something funny happens. If you step on it, poof, it bursts into a cloud of smoke, like a cartoon fart. It's their way of freeing their spores. Oh, so all of this is spores. Elegant, isn't it? Some of them are huge, like basketballs. We call them giant puffballs. Look at this little guy. He's cute. Hee <laughs> hee, fart. Now, this is a puffball that I found. 
You can see the spores coming out through there. It almost looks just like dirt flying out. Even I got some of them on my finger that time. They're pretty fun to play with. I'm taking a little break from sharing facts to draw my daughter stepping on puffballs. It's too fun. I know I said not to destroy mushrooms, but no need to worry about the puffballs. They like it when you step on them. It makes their spores go everywhere, which helps them reproduce. The coral mushroom. I really like this one. It looks like something that we would grow at the bottom of the sea. That's why they're called coral mushrooms. Some are gray or white or pink, but this one is my favorite. I've seen very big ones. Instead of a cap, it has many fingers that point to the sky. They're fragile. Be gentle with them. Right? So there's no cap here. It's just gone. And there's no gills, nothing like that. There's just all these little fingers pointing to the sky almost like little peace signs. Uh, you gotta be peaceful when you approach this guy. You gotta be gentle. The fly agaric. Fly agaric is a very pretty mushroom. I find them all the time. Their caps are red or yellow, depending on where in the world you find them. Illustrators like me love to draw them in picture books. They're so handsome. When they grow, the fly agaric comes out of something that looks like an egg, right? And you saw our little egg down here. We call it a vulva or you call it a cup. When they grow, the fly agaric comes out of something that looks like an egg. We call it fly agaric because a long time ago, people would crush them in milk to repel flies. They're very pretty, but don't eat them. They're toxic. Ooh. Let's see what this guy says. Oh, now if you can recognize this character right here, you can see how uh, in depth into our culture, especially if you're a gamer, uh, mushrooms are. So in this particular game, this character is called Toad. That comes from Toadstool. A toadstool was the name of mushrooms because they were often drawn with toads sitting on them. Um, it just kind of stuck. And so here he's got uh, his little spots, which would be like his scales. He's got his cap. This would be his stock. And down here is his uh, cup, the egg. And over here would be like his mycelium. <laughs> and now you'll never look at Toad the same way. The dog stink horn. Ooh, yummy, it smells so good. <laughs> These guys are the kings of the stinkers. They smell like dog poop. The smell is so strong that sometimes you smell them even before you see them. They stink like this to attract flies who help them disperse their spores. I've seen some in a park near my house and believe me, you don't want to eat them unless you're a fly, of course. Destroying angel. <laughs> Sounds very pleasant. How do you like my little skirt? He's got a little skirt here. Remember that's called the ring. It's very important to distinguish Amanita mushrooms. Ooh, Amanita verosa. Every time I see one, I get chills. Ooh. It's because it's one of the most toxic mushrooms. It can even be deadly. It's sometimes called a destroying angel. To me, it looks like a ghost. So this one, don't touch it, all right? Let's see what I did. Uh-oh. So that giant white patch there. And I'm touching it, but this is one that I'm gonna tell you already, you shouldn't be touching it. <laughs> <laughs> um, this is part of the veil, the initial veil. And if we look underneath, you can see the little, the rest of that veil. And this is for sure an Amanita mushroom. It's got that little egg sac underneath. And so 
so these guys always look super pretty and people would think this is the right one to eat and it's not. <laughs> As I was saying earlier, there are so many species of mushrooms. I wish I could tell you all about all of them, but that would be very long book. Instead, I'll tell you about the beautiful mushroom names I've come across. Just listen to those names, how poetic. They sound like the ingredients for a witch's spell. Let's see what some of these names are. We've got Pink Disco, Gassy Webcap, Bug Sputnik, Bird's Nest Fungi, Funeral Bell, uh, Witch's Butter, Cabbage Parachute, uh, Whiskery Milk Cap, Turquoise Elf Cup. And we've got a picture here. Now, one of these names belongs with this picture. If you had to guess which one, what do you think it would be? I'll go ahead and name some more of these right now. We've got Powdery Piggy Bank, Devil's Fingers. Just give you a minute to focus on that. Lion Shield or Bitter Poison Pie. Uh, Cat Dapperling, Mealy Oyster, Vampire's Bane, Hot Lips, Dead Malt's Fingers, Ooh. Potato Earth Ball. I wonder if you can eat that one. <laughs> Plums and custard. King Alfred's cake sounds delicious. Elbow patch crust sounds the complete opposite. Tiger's eye, drumstick truffle club. Uh, cinnamon jelly baby, wet rot. Uh, ink cap, the pretender. Golden navel and drab tooth. I may have repeated some of those. Did you figure out which one this one was? It's called Witch's Butter. You can imagine a witch using this for butter. <laughs> when it first comes out of the trunk, it actually looks a lot like snot. And so maybe kind of like melted butter, just not that appetizing. When we come back from our walks, we put our treasures on the table and look in our books to try and identify them all. It's hard. There are so many that look alike. You can see all the different mushrooms they have here on this table. And they're trying to identify it. Looks like that one's bleeding a little bit. Uh, remember they said some of these will bleed a little bit. Is that all kinds? Most of them have caps though which are pretty common. So did you enjoy our treasure hunt? Would you like to find out more about mushrooms? There are many books about fungi where you'll discover wonders I don't even know about. Check them out at your local library. And don't forget to take lots of walks in the woods. Have fun now. Ooh, we have some extra little mushroom facts. In case I still haven't convinced you that mushrooms are cool, there are about 30 species of mushrooms that glow in the dark. The super mushroom from Mario, remember Mario? Is the poisonous fly agaric. Looks like it, doesn't it? It's got the little veil and everything. Mushrooms grow better where lightning has recently struck. Crack, pop, pop, pop. And they're coming out of that ground or out of the tree or wherever. We actually had a tree stuck, struck by lightning at my older park, uh, Cooper Lake State Park. It was a champion tree, unfortunately, for the post oak. Um, it is no longer a champion tree, but it had a ton of mushrooms coming out the first year and even the second year that I was there. So really cool. Um, this mushroom called the sulfur shelf grows on trees and tastes almost exactly like fried chicken. Look, it's clucking too. Quack, quack, quack. In Oregon, these, there is a mushroom that is 2,400 years old. That's really old. It's mycelium, the underground part of the mushroom. Remember the roots? Covers a surface bigger than a soccer field. It's destroying thousands of trees. 
That's the, the honey mushroom. You could look it up on Google. It's huge and it's taking over the forest. Mushrooms can be used to make bread, beer, medication, fabric and wool dye, bricks, fake leather, cheese, and much more. See her magic. And I believe it. There is a ton that you can get from mushrooms. Um, before we get into that, let's go check out our wiggly friend over here. Uh, ooh, remember the video we saw of that slug? Well, here it is now with a black light. And you can see that that mushroom is glowing under it. Let's see, get the light closer to the side of him, your side. Yeah. He's punching away. And there he got scared. Oh, he got scared again. That's because of broke went on him. All righty. Things that happened to me while hunting mushrooms. Found a moose skull, scared a snake, came face to face with a porcupine, found a giant bear poop. <laughs> That's exciting. Met a baby deer, walked on a wasp nest, ouch. Walked into poison ivy, double ouch. You got a picture of that right there in case you all wanted to know what poison ivy looks like. Met nice people and made new friends. Mushroom hunting is a big adventure. Ooh, and here we go, the last part. This is something you all can do at home if you do find a mushroom um, that you kind of wanna make a little bit of art with, or you kind of wanna just see if you can actually go through this little spore print DIY. Spore prints are very pretty, and the color of the spores can even help you identify the mushrooms. Um, you will need a mushroom, some paper, a glass or bowl, a glass for small mushrooms and a bowl for bigger ones, all right? So step one, remove the stem, you only need the cap. So you're gonna keep the, that top part, right? With all the gills and everything. You only wanna take off the stem or the stalk. Put the mushroom cap on a piece of paper with the tubes or gills facing down. So you can see all the little gills are up against that paper. Cover it with a glass or a bowl. You want to cover it to keep the moisture in, the humidity, so that it doesn't dry out too quickly. And then the, when it shrivels up, when it dries out, it'll mess up that spore print. You want to keep that spore print nice and pretty and round. Let it sit all night. In the morning, you should see a, a pretty spore print. If you can't see anything, it's because the spores are the same color as your paper. You can decorate them too, like I did. And so in this case, I would say, you could try doing half and half. You could do a white paper and a black paper and see where it shows up, shows up better. Um, or you could do two mushrooms and have one on a white paper and one on a black paper. The end. And here you can see the author and her friends, her kiddos with those mushrooms. There's a big old polypore that's bigger than her head. And a giant collection here of mushrooms that they got as well. And I've got a few other pictures from my little journeys, my hunts. These are also from Cooper Lake State Park. And so here you can see the skirt, uh, the stem or the stalk. You can even see the little lines of the gills here on the edge. And the cap, you can see the scales on top of the cap. And if you were to dig underneath here, you'd find a little egg or a cup and some mycelium. And this would be another Amanita. This is actually a fungus that grows off of a juniper tree. Uh, it's kind of seasonal, so it almost looks like the juniper is giving off fruit. Um, I didn't get to see it the first year I was there, but the second year I got to, and I got to find one that was there on the ground, and I showed it to absolutely everybody because I thought it was the most amazing thing in the world. <laughs> um, but it oozes out this orange stuff that just looks really weird. And that's where the spores come out. 
And then you have this one. Uh, this, this species right here tends to do little like fairy rings and things like that. It just grows a whole bunch of them all together. Um, you can see there's another one right here. And they just cluster together. It just looks adorable. And then over here on this side, we've got something weird. So this is not just a fungi. This is a complex community that create a single species. And that single species is a type of lichen. So lichens grow on trees, but they're not parasitic to them. They're just growing on top of them. And here, uh, you can see all these little discs are where their spores are released. And they'll reproduce. And they'll start off small. These might be different kind of lichen right here. Uh, but they'll start off smaller and then they'll grow eventually to this adult form. And lichens tend to be uh, one or more types of fungi mixed with an algae and even some bacteria and other things thrown in there. So it's a, really a community of organisms to make this one species. Now, algaes are a good sign of fresh air. Keep that in mind. Over here in this picture, we've got uh, a parasitic fungus. This one is eating away at this tree. It's already made a crater in here. Um, you can actually see several spots on the tree in this picture where it's been eaten. Um, it's kind of caving in. And this is a big old post oak. You can see how small the people in the truck are compared to it. Unfortunately, it's one of the oaks that's at the campsite, so they were going to have to cut it down, uh, which means no more shade for that campsite. Uh, but this is a natural process. So fungus like this is what helps the forest, uh, the trees and the wood of the trees, the old trees deteriorate back into the soil um, so that they can nourish new trees and new plants. So it's part of the cycle. Uh, we unfortunately hate to see the old tree go, but we know that it's just part of life. That's the end of my little PowerPoint. So I've got a little bit left for you. I told you we're going to talk about some of the uses for fungi, how you use them in your home. Um, and we're going to look at one more worksheet and see if you can identify that stuff through there. So we have, two, two, two. if you've ever heard of something called citric acid, it has a part to play in things like Cheetos. Like the Cheetos, right? Me too. And spaghetti sauce. Normally you would think citric acid has something to do with citrus, but it actually comes from fungus. That's not to say citrus doesn't have citric acid, it just doesn't have as much or produce as much as certain species of fungi. So here's another one. Candy, candy has a lot of citric acid, like jelly beans. Um, and then we also have vanilla pudding mix. Ooh. So all of these use citric acid and citric acid is also sometimes just used as a preservative. So if you think of it kind of like salt, um, except it's like a sour taste, a tart sour taste. Now, what else does one guy do? It also ferments. So we've got, anybody's ever liked having white rice with soy sauce? Soy sauce, it's fermented. Or how many of us like to eat do, 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 do. bread? So bread is also fermented with something called yeast. Oh, and here's my citric acid. Looks white like salt too. So this is an example, quick rise yeast. You can see the word right there. It's a uh, instant yeast to make stuff like bread. But that's not where it stops. So things like blue cheese, wine, and believe it or not, even a lot of coffees need fungi to taste as good as they do. 
and even chocolate. Uh, now you can find it in pretty much everything. Um, there is something called a truffle. It's a type of fungus that you normally see the fruit under the ground, um, or I guess you normally don't see it since it's under the ground. And some truffles are very hard to find, and that makes them very expensive. Yeah. And restaurants love having those truffles. And so in some of those cases, if you were to go to, for example, Central Market in Dallas, you might be lucky enough to see a truffle there for uh, $999 a pound. Now this wasn't quite that much, but here's a little example of truffles. They're in a, a nice little oil. You can use those too to make your fancy dishes. Um, or things like this, the reishi uh, that's mixed into a tea. Tons and tons of products for fungi. And it really is everywhere. Uh, spores are in the air. And if you think about it, if you have ever seen rotting fruit inside of a refrigerator drawer, that's also fungi usually. Uh, but again, we need them. So I've got my last example here is a stick. <laughs> it's an amazing stick. Um, this stick is from a tree. It's a dead part of a tree that fell off. And right here where my finger was at, um, we've got a fungus that's actually uh, decaying this. So yay, this will eventually become nutrients for new trees. You can see the fungus has already grown all the way through it. It's on several parts of this little branch here. Um, and it'll put all those nutrients back into the soil. So we've got our last worksheet. And just bear with me a second while I put it up. I'm gonna go back to our last camera. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and put it on this side. There we go. Now our last worksheet has to do with identifying all the different places where you might find fungi in this picture. Now there's several of them that are pretty easy to find and there's several, several you have to use your imagination. So let's look. We've got this, right? We'll call that number one. And that looks like mold. Well, that apple there, these are all nice and clean, but this one's got black spot. And then, ooh, if we look right across over here, this is number two, we've got what looks like a shaggy mane mushroom. We have some of these in our park, but they're called desert shaggy mane. So I'm not the desert there too. Let me get one in our park. Okay. What else? Mm, what about this? Remember the big old post oak we were talking about right here? This we could say is number three. And this could be a uh, parasitic fungus. You can see that tree's still alive, so it's taking the nutrients while the tree's alive. That's what a parasite does. Oops, I forgot my end. Fungus. Okay, and what else? Let's keep going up this way. What about soda? Soda's kind of like liquid candy, right? If you remember about our candy, it has what's called citric acid. Thank you. Number four. We're going to say citric acid. What else? Keep going, and what is that? That, you can see two slices right here, is cheese. 
number five. Now cheese is either fermented by bacteria or, or bacteria culture or a fungal culture. Um, and then it's aged with that. And so we're gonna say that this is blue cheese because blue cheese is one of those cheeses that uh, uses fungus. Okay, what else? What about the basket? Yeah. Maybe there's something hiding in that, who knows? The uh, last thing right here is gonna be the bread. Remember from our bread, our bread uses number six, something called yeast, so that it can help it rise. So it's not hard and tough, it has lots of little bubbles in it. And let's see, continue here. Uh, what do I hear? Is there any type of fungus that grows on wheat? We have something called athletes, but ooh, it's a fungus that grows on your toes. Okay, so we're already at seven here. We've only hit the bottom of the page. Uh, what about here? If you look right here, it looks like little mushrooms on this pizza. All right, those are usually for bellas. This is number eight. All right, now what else? In our book, we also talked about uh, some clothing and uh, leather and things like that. Like well, my shirt um, having dyes made from mushrooms or fake leather. All right, let's keep going. What is this over here? So on this rock, we have something that's just growing on top of it, not in it, on top. And this, remember correctly, is a community species. This is what you call um, a lichen. And it's a mixture of bacteria, algae, and fungi. Uh, what else? Uh, and who knows, you know, there's the ground, which might have more mycelium in it of different species or roots. So you could say that's easily number 11, just can't see it. Um, or you could say in the air, there might be spores, right? Number 12, some spores. Really, they're just absolutely everywhere. So you see, we've pretty much covered this picture with the exception of a little bit of the sky. That's not to say there's nothing up there. For example, if you were to see something like a bug with a little bit of something coming out of it, uh, it could be a, another parasitic fungus. Maybe there's bugs like that up in the tree that we just can't see. You use your imagination. That's part of the whole thing about looking for mushrooms is that you really have to kind of get into the place of where are they? Alrighty. And we are going to switch back over. I hope you all enjoyed the reading of the Mushroom Fan Club. I absolutely love this book. I highly recommend that you get it. Um, but I also have a whole bunch of other books here behind me uh, that I also really like. And even a, this side, a guide um, for kind of looking up what mushrooms are in the area. This is a Texas mushroom guide. Um, some books by Paul Cement 
and even some books about gourmet mushrooms, the kind that you eat. So there's a whole bunch of different literature on this. And not only that, if you wanted to take something into your classroom or in with your kiddos and learn a little bit more, um, they do sell mushroom grow kits. And mushroom grow kits come with this awesome little booklet of activities, recipes, um, and more that I would highly recommend as well. Um, I, you can see that I already started mine. Um, and I wanted to show you not just the mushrooms on top that are dried. These are or oyster mushrooms that are dried now. They have little gills on them. Um, I don't know if you can see them there. But I also wanted to show you, you know, this is what they're uh, growing off of. It's now down at the bottom. But up here, <laughs> we've got the mycelium that's trying to grow down into it. Um, these are dried, but I'm sure I might still be able to salvage a bit if I try it. So highly recommend it. You can actually eat what you grow. Um, in this case, I have to rehydrate it to do that. Uh, but that's not a problem. As you see, I have plenty of dry mushrooms. So there are some other activities and things that will be connected to this video that you can find online. Um, highly recommend that if you are interested, you take your kiddo and you start looking for things in your house that might have citric acid or other things that uh, use fungi or mushroom byproducts or the actual mushrooms themselves. And you get a little more accustomed to seeing mushrooms in the way that they are truly uh, a magical and wonderful uh, group of uh, our wildlife, essentially. And they're extremely important out here. If you all do ever want to take a hike out here with us, you can contact me, Bianca, at Benson State Park, and I'll have my information on this video as well, or send on a link. Um, and I will be happy to go on a hike with you. We can plan it all together, especially if you've got a group to do it with, because it's always fun with a ton of people. So thank you again for listening in. Um, <laughs> I could easily go on and on and on, but I do want to uh, say thanks and invite you to our park. Welcome fun guys and fun gals to Mushrooms with Benson Rio Grande State Park. <laughs>